I figured out why light um, is photons and wave function. Because when we see the wavelength, we're only seeing the outline of the wave. The wave is actually a circle, a packet circle, a packeted circle that is tangent to another packeted circle. I don't know if it's an actual circle, but it's a shape that looks like a bead, like beads, like a beaded necklace. They're, they round out into beads, and then they get to the point where they touch the next bead. What, well, and there's a string between the two or whatever in beaded necklaces, and maybe that's the way it works in packets of light, too. There's that moment of zero where there's got to be something, where it's like twisting or, you know, DNA is stranding, helixing. Um, and they, could be, they could be, the light things could be more shaped like egg-shaped or something. But those waves, they seem kind of round. I mean, they're definitely not circles. Where are they? I don't know. Spheres of light? That would make sense, but no sphere, sphere of round. I mean, the, uh, the sun is all wobbly shaped. You know, all the spheres are amorphous. Um, when I think about it to myself, the thoughts come so deeply when I talk about it I feel like I land on a spot in hydroplane or plane I land on a spot in plane that's the truth Oh, so what that was leading me to was, so these spherical, you know, whatever, packets of light. That's pretty cool. Um, but another thing I was thinking about was that the wavelength itself, the shape of it, if you step back far enough, will still look like that same shape. If you step back too far, it doesn't look like anything. And if you step back not far enough, it looks like a shorter wavelength. Um, so I was thinking because of, um, and this is kind of a guess, this, this, is a, this is a really kind of far out there theory, but because of resonating frequency, like when something, the thing is you don't resonate the same frequency that you're projecting, you resonate a level, it's like a octaves up or eight octaves up or something, I don't know. But basically it's when the vibration turns on itself and starts vibrating in the other direction, causing the affinity strand or whatever, that's like its resonant frequency, everything has one, and it's codable. So if you plug in a, a shape in a spot and it's resonating frequency and what it's composed of, you pretty much create the matrix. Um, or like how it, it, you know you can you can add in how it's composed. It's pretty cool. Like what what how much where and everything. Um. So because of this resonating frequency, I feel like our thoughts project this small frequency. Well, really, we're producing gamma waves and shit, alpha waves, alpha waves. I don't know what the what the letter R would stand for in Greek. Well, how I know it's here. Um, I should find that out. Greek alphabet, baby. Maybe there isn't a letter for R. This is why the internet's fun. Apple cider vinegar for breakfast. Good idea. Apple cider vinegar is good shit. Um, Greek alphabet. So anyway, we're, pro we're producing waves. It doesn't really matter what letter because they're rho. Looks like an uppercase P and a lowercase P. I'm sending out rho waves. Is that possible? Um, 
okay, we're sending out a magnitude of waves, and we're probably sending out different levels of frequency, which are causing all sorts of different waves. Obviously, we have sound waves. Um, but our deep thoughts, like I can hear it, and I know it's there because it blocks out other sound. It's not that it's like, I mean, I kind of no deafening silence, you know? It's got its own sound. That's because it's a wave, like a, an alpha wave or something, some heavy, powerful gamma ray. I don't know what the fuck it is. Actually, this screen blasting on my face is a heavy, powerful gamma ray. Thank you, screen. We need new screens that oscillate at different frequencies that really help your face and skin. I mean, these are really nice, too. Thank you. I love you. It's a good piece of technology, but goddamn, is it blasting radio waves in my face? Um, uh, so this is how, so that, that deafening silence that can block out other sound. Um, I think it travels in pairs. Well, at least in pairs. Like, basically, it goes out of your head, and it, it creates, like, almost, you could say it creates, like, a layer that just coats your body, as if it's this layer of sound or something that coats you. Um, it's also is you. That's why it seems like it's coating you. So, it's there. It's on that level. And then it's on a level just a far away from your body. Uh, a, a, like a real thin layer of it. And then it's like mega out there. I mean, way different layers, you know? And uh, I think that your thoughts create a wave, especially if you point them in a direction uh, that will continue to travel uh, and create giant shapes on the mass scale if you can still see it, assuming the wave doesn't get smaller or bigger. Uh, because it's still the same packet of light. It just takes longer to get to your eye. But it should have the, like a photograph, the uh, imprint of the wave, I think. Um, so, I don't know how much is projected off of a wave when it hits like, well, what is it? It's, it's probably just like a ball that's like, twisting and disappearing and reappearing as it but it's not it's not really disappearing it is but you know what it is how it turns into that other thing that's like whatever it goes behind the curtain of reality of the veil of whatever we see um for that are 70 percent of madness or 80 percent of the fun or whatever 70 80 percent of whatever who knows how much whatever is going on that we don't click you know or per perceive so it's kind of undulating, this, wit this, this light ball, you know, and that's, that's a wave. We see only such a small part of it, and we only see the focal point, too. Like, there's so much outside of that area that we don't see about what that is. Like, that could be the spine of the whale of existence. Popping in and out, you know, like peeping through, like this breathing pattern. That's why LSD is great. <sighs> because uh, when it looks like the wall's breathing... It's actually your body that's breathing, and everything looks like it's pulsating at the same because you're seeing it through the lens of what you're doing, you know? It's like if you're miserable, everyone else seems miserable. Not, off, not, not that extreme, but there's a miserable taint to everything because it's you're, you're getting it through your own thing. So that's all LSD is. It's, it's like a higher pipe where people want to put it out like it's somewhere else, but it's like... I mean, that's the most intense like wall breathing I've ever experienced was while using that drug, and it was good to note that it was just me perceiving it to be breathing that way. But it has come down to some sort of rhythm. I don't need to advocate LSD, but I feel like I do because it's illegal, and that's odd. Like, why are psychedelics banned and scrutinized? Are they dangerous to young minds, maybe? I didn't, you know, I didn't try it until I was much older. Uh, and in very small amounts. Like, I'll drink a lot of water. You know, the thing about LSD is I feel like I was going to vomit uh, because of the crap in my stomach. And it was particularly because of the amount of food and the, whatever was in there was not like what my body needed. Um... 
I saw infrared light coming out of my phone. I'm, I think I've mentioned this in a video before. Like I was sleeping and it was like up, to like eye level, like here or something. I was like, and I woke up and the light was going into the phone. Like this infrared light was like getting sucked back in or something. And then my eyes like came to real existence. I was like, no, let's see that infrared again. And it was like, oh, I was, there's something like in the upper back of my temples. You know, there's a reactive area. Because it's not the red you see, it's the red like that's there if you hold your breath for a long time. How you're blacking out, you're not seeing black, it's like, um, it's that kind of light. Like between consciousness and unconsciousness, you, you see red. There's a red before it goes black. Um, there's all sorts of colors, but that's probably the infrared. At least I think it's infrared because... It was red, but I could be off base completely. It could be a microwave, it could be a gamma ray. I just assumed it was infrared because that was kind of cool to think that I was seeing infrared. I saw some some red light, and it was definitely not like a, I knew what it was. I want to. Uh, It's tough to think out loud. And that's not true. It's easy to think out loud. <sighs> Thinking about uh, those balls of light, like, mm. like, well, that's being a drummer so good. This is when the video gets horribly self-indulgent. Um, and that's when everyone's like, okay, dude, you hit some good points and then went way past the points. And I'm like, extra credit. But the truth is, if I'm not doing anything and it's extra credit, that's not really extra credit. And it's wasting people's time, isn't it? I mean, if it's extra credit, yeah, it's extra credit. I made a good point. Doesn't mean I get to revel for eight minutes and just make fun of stuff. Um, at least I'm going to do that anyway. But uh, you know, I don't want to be taking up your time with me goofing off. So I'll see you later. Uh, uh, I hope you got something out of this. Um, I'm talking to a video camera, so I love you, uh, video camera people. You video camera. I like your red light on you. And uh, I like your, your shaded hood. You can put that down and show people. Yeah, you're different, you know? You're a different kind of video camera. You get to be where you want to be. You know, like an eyeball. Okay. See ya.